Hello and welcome to Crimax. In today's episode, we'll be discussing a highly publicized Hollywood murder. I'm going to turn it over to the hot stuff sitting next to me because she knows a little bit more of this Hollywood stuff because I don't keep up with it. Did you say Hollywood? I did. And I <laughs> fucked that up. I was hoping you wouldn't catch it. <laughs> All right. Well, today we are talking about Phil Spector murdering model and actress Lana Clarkson in his Hollywood castle. Yeah, there's an actual castle involved. and it's he Hollywood. Yeah, I know. I know. But he recently died this week or I guess last week from when you're hearing this. But you know, I'm happy this piece of shit is dead and I want to talk about what he did to this poor woman. So that's what we're talking about today. What's our fun fact? So I was hoping that we would be doing some sort of like oceanic murder missing type thing or something like that. Well, he just died. I had to do it now. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, my fact's going to actually be both on survival and a animal, I suppose you could do. Yeah. Nah, it's an animal. So it's going to be about our good friend, a shark attack. Oh my god, of course a shark is an animal. Yeah, well, I was trying to think. It, yeah, it's a vertebrae, so it's an animal. I couldn't think. I was like, is it... It's still an, an animal. An, Even an animal. bugs are considered animals. An animal. I know. It's been a long day. So, with sharks, you know, a lot of people are kind of scared of them. And yeah, shark attacks do happen. So I'm going to kind of, you know, go over some of the best things that you can kind of do to hopefully um, survive one. Right? So, you know, I almost got eaten by a shark one time. You did? I didn't know that. Yeah, my sister, uh, myself, and my friend Sarah were at the beach near a lighthouse. You had friends? Yeah, <laughs> I had one at one point. Um, but yeah, there's a shark that flew up next to the sandbar and flew, <laughs> glided up to the sandbar, and uh, my dad just threw us in the boat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah, he almost got his ankles eaten. Nice. <laughs> Well, if you're unlucky enough to have a dad yank you out of the water or have a boat or anything like that. That's unlucky? If you're lucky enough. Oh, I thought you said unlucky enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, if I did, I meant to go the opposite way. So okay, okay, tell me the yeah. fact. <laughs> so, okay, so when it comes to kind of a, a shark attack and things like that, a lot of times they don't really do it with the full intentions of eating you. Normally, a first pass for a shark is just kind of testing the waters like they might bump you or something like that for those that get bit you know right out of the gate on a surfboard a lot of times they think that they're seals uh, on top of the water and things like that so usually the first attack is just going to be to kind of check you out to see what it is if it's edible and things like that um, a lot of people also don't know that shark skin feels a lot like sandpaper really uh -huh. so even a, just it brushing up against you will, will hurt um, the best things to really do is try and fight that instinct to really freak out and let and try not to have that uh, fight or flight instinct kind of kick in as best as you can because uh, at that point your brain shuts down and you just start panicking. You don't want to panic. You want to try and you know understand what's happening. Uh, try and get eyes on the shark because a lot of people will even when they understand what's happening they'll start like booking it back to the beach and everything like that. But what they don't know is that by swimming really fast, you create a wake and you create like a, that thrashing motion. They want to see things in distress. And that's what, sh yeah. And that's what really triggers sharks to kind of go into attack mode is that all that thrashing and stuff like that. So really what you want to do is just kind of get an understanding of the situation as, you know, if you can, um, you know, keep your eyes on the shark. Don't just start turning around and swimming back to the shore. You want to always at, as best as you can because of course they're blue the water's blue it's kind of hard to see but as best as you can try and keep your eyes on it and then slowly make your way back to shore um, don't punch it in the nose actually no if it does come to that and you do have to fight which you very may well have to um, kick it because it's better to lose a leg than an arm and this comes back to uh, this <laughs> This comes back to, you know, you want to keep an eye on it. You know, if it does start getting close, if you can, you know, definitely try and punch it into the nose. No, I'm kicking that thing. I'm not losing my arm. Well, punch it, kick it, whatever. Just the nose is going to be the most sensitive for a shark. Uh, a lot of its receptors and stuff like that are right on the Until nose. Until it opens its mouth and it's wide open. Yeah. Well. Now, <laughs> if, you get, if you get caught in its mouth, um, at that point... Um, a lot of people will want to try and go for the eyes and things like that, not knowing that uh, when a shark actually attacks... It closes its eyes. No, it doesn't close it. Oh. Uh, what it is is the eyes will actually go into the socket and roll back into the head. So effectively, they're actually blind. So they're getting off on eating you? They roll their eyes in the back of their head? Yeah, pretty much. That's disgusting. Pretty much. They also lick you before? They bump yeah. you to like 
are you delicious or not? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so uh, within a few feet or so is when the eyes will start to roll back. And what they do is they rely on senses, uh, sensory organs in the nose that allow it to actually pick up your bioelectric field because everything living gives off a sort of a bioelectric field. And they can actually sense that. But again, it only works within, you know, a few feet or so. So, you know, right before it attacks, that'll happen. So a lot of people will try and go for the eyes, which I mean, if you can, if that's all you can get to, then go for it. Um, but I would try and maybe either, you know, reach into its gills. I mean, as bad as it sounds, if you're already in the mouth, just, you know, try and reach down because their gills flow. It's all right there. I've you've seen the fish in my, in my, in my bathroom. Yes, this man you has know? a fish mounted in his bathroom oh, and I nice despise bass. it. Nice I hate bass. It. Hate it. Yeah. This is the biggest bass I caught that thing was in fifth grade. I, I don't like taxidermy. I had a small lake. It was great. That's the only thing I have. It's, I don't like it. I didn't know my mom had it done. I thought we ate it that night. Anywho. Yeah, but like I don't like looking down its mouth because the yeah. mouth is open. Well, it's you gross. saw the gills and pretty much that's what you do is you, if, I mean, if your hand's already in there and if you can, Go ahead and try and start just grabbing at stuff and just like ripping it. it. Mm -mm. Um, but other than that, yeah, just, you know, hit it on the nose and just very slowly, as calmly as you can. Because, of course, I mean, if you're bleeding, you definitely don't want to freak out because it gets the heart pumping more. You're going to freak out if you're bitten. There's no No, I know. <laughs> no, I know. I know. But, I mean, just as best as you can, try and, you know, be aware of the situation. But just don't panic. I mean, I understand that's kind of a uh, oxymoron to say, because I mean, you're, you're gonna panic. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. You um, know, I'm not actually scared of sharks. I'm scared of jellyfish. Cause you know, you're in the ocean, oh, you see things coming towards well, you on a wave. The most dangerous thing in the world is a box jellyfish. Well, the most venomous is a box jellyfish. Ew. They are, yeah. Really? Oh yeah. I'm always scared. Like if you're in the ocean, you see one on a wave. I got, a, I got a bunch of fun facts about jellyfish, actually. A lot of, a lot of random stuff. Can you eat them? Um, Probably, you can eat anything you want to. Yeah, you can, but they won't taste good. A lot of stuff tastes bad that people eat. Yeah, I know. But I mean, <laughs> and actually, well, you know what? We're not going to get into those facts because okay, okay. I do have a whole bunch of facts on jellyfish. <laughs> okay. I'll expect a part two next week. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll come up with an aquatic story for you. How's that? All right. That'll work. <laughs> All right. So you ready to get in today's case? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so today we're talking about the death of Lana Clarkson. She was a model and actress, and she was killed by legendary music producer Phil Spector. I decided to cover this case because one, he just died, and two, I'm in a lot of true crime serial killer group things, and they posted a lot of headlines of like, people really not giving this dude as much shit as he should have gotten. They were like, oh, legendary, blah, 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 and they did not note on the fact that he was a horrible person. So I'm here to do that for you today with my anger and hostility towards this man. And I don't care if he's dead. Maybe he shouldn't have died in prison. Maybe he should have just lived on forever, suffering in jail. That's how I feel. We don't have to agree. If you disagree, I don't know why. But anyways, he I, killed Lana Clarkson. <laughs> I will actually say, uh, we actually have a picture up here because apparently I am a visual person. <laughs> And the more I look at a certain picture here, he, it does look very, very familiar. See, I don't keep up with like celebrities and I don't keep up with what goes on for the most part about, you know, all this stuff. So I don't do the whole, or I don't keep up with like mass murder. Like really honestly, the, the most famous murder I know is probably um, OJ. Jack the Ripper. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or like Ted Bundy or Buffalo Bill. And the only reason I know those... Buffalo Bill isn't real. I know. <laughs> but, I mean, it's based off of that one dude, right? Ed Gain. Yeah. Yes. And the only reason I know that is, you know, because of the Hannibal movies. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't really keep up with, with stuff like that. But you've seen this picture. It, it just, it, the more I look at it, that certain one looks familiar because, I mean, you don't forget a picture like that. Yeah, it's his mugshot. And then the one that looks like he got freaking fried by lightning up there. So I have a picture of his mugshot up here is what he's looking at. And also, Phil Spector was known to wear a lot of wigs because at the age of 23, he started balding. And he was really embarrassed by it. And he also wore really tall, fluffy wigs because he was only 5'5 five five and he wanted to look taller. That's not how that works. It's okay. not how that works, but he wore a lot of wigs. But anyways, so let's talk about Phil Spector and then we'll talk about Lana Clarkson. I'll tell you a little bit about both of them before we get into the night of the murder. So Phil Spector was known as like the biggest music producer like ever. He is even in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He worked with bands like the Beatles, produced a whole album with them. He worked with Tina Turner, the Ramones, and the Ronettes. He actually married one of the Ronettes and like held her hostage in his home while they were married because he was very overbearing and abusive. So he developed his own sound effects 
and layered instruments in a new way that hadn't been done before. So he was really sought after in the music space and got him tons of money real fast. By the age of 21, he was already a millionaire. And with all of that success at an early age and coming pretty quickly, it gave him a really bad attitude. Like he was known to just not be mentally stable or nice to people. So he would actually like have girls in his house, like keep them there for days. He was cheating on his wife when he married one of the Ronettes. Like he just, he shot guns in the air around people. Even John Lennon from the Beatles, they were doing like a session, just strapping some ideas around and he shot a gun in the air. And John Lennon was like, hey, if you're gonna shoot, shoot me. If you're gonna do it, just do it already. Which, you know, didn't end well for him because he did get shot. Um, but yeah, he was just known to like be really crazy. And a lot of people were like, oh, that's just, that's just Spectre. He's just like that. That's what the Ramones said. He's just known to carry guns around and shoot him constantly. And also along with being a millionaire comes a lot of drugs and alcohol usage as well. But he was just overbearing and crazy. Lana Clarkson, on the other hand, grew up in Long Beach, California. She started pursuing a career in modeling at a young age, starting when she was a teenager. She did appear in over 50 TV appearances. She had minor roles in movies like Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Scarface, which is a classic. And also Scarface, if you didn't know, is cursed. Like there's a curse. I was actually planning for this week to talk about another girl who went missing after freaking out on the set of Scarface. So just like The Crow, Scarface is also a cursed film. I have yet to see Scarface. I've seen all the crows. Oh, Crow is so good. It is. First one's the best. Yeah. But they that. couldn't, you know, finish it because he died. But mm. so good. Scarface is all right. Like, it's not my thing. Also, it's funny, actually, that Scarface is mentioned because that's Al Pacino's most famous movie. And Al Pacino actually play played Phil Spector in the Phil Spector movie. So that's a weird connection. But she was best known for two roles. Like she had two in a row Barbarian Queen movies produced by Roger Corman. And that was like her biggest role. It actually fit her really well because she was a tall, beautiful blonde. She was six, six foot tall, which is really tall, but it actually kind of fit that model aesthetic you expect to see. She couldn't make acting her full-time job. So at the time she was murdered, she was working a gig as the hostess of the House of Blues. And if you don't know what the House of Blues is, it's like an A-list celebrity party spot. It's a very well-known bar and they're well-known like celebrities leave really big tips there. So she was doing okay. So that's a little bit about both these people. Let's talk about the night of February 3rd, 2003 in Alhambra, California. Thank you, honey, for helping me spell that or yep. say that. It's a really weird, weird we word. We have a theater here called the Alhambra Theater that my grandmother always, Mimi, always goes to. Is that to. the one where they play like, uh, they do, like they do plays. plays there? Yeah. Musicals. They do plays. Yeah, they do musicals. Oh, they yeah. didn't have... Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, my grandmother actually went to one. Of the, she goes to them all the time. She has like tickets like year round, whatever to them. Uh -huh. um, it, and, but it wasn't until afterwards that she had found out that one of the people she went with I tested positive for COVID. I just found out today, actually, that because of that, Mimi went ahead and got tested, and mm -hmm. she's positive for it. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I know. That sucks. So we'll see how that goes. So on the night of February 3rd, 2003, Phil Spector's driver, Mr. D'Souza, called 911 to report that he thought his boss shot someone twice, and that lady was dead on the floor, and that Phil Spector had a gun in his hand. So 911 came out. They released an ambulance, as well as a bunch of police officers. Phil Spector stopped the police at the back door trying to leave the building, trying to explain to them there's a misunderstanding that took place in the home that night. He basically was blaming Lana Clarkson for this incident, saying basically, I don't even know her. She had the nerve to shoot herself in my house. Really weird thing to say, like victim blaming right from the start, but again, people don't take responsibility for their actions. Now this whole, she just shot herself in my house didn't really make sense when you saw the scene because the scene was very romantically set. There were candles and liquor and wine out on the tables. There was also light, soft classical music playing in the background like he was trying to set the mood. Um, and that was still playing when the police showed up. So he did not actually want to go with police. He didn't want to be touched by police. He just wanted to be like, hey, get this dead body out of my house. The police tried to detain him. They tried to tase him twice, but the taser failed. So they ended up just pulling him to the ground and detaining him for further questioning at the station. Bitches don't kill themselves when they're about to get laid. I mean, she probably just stopped his advances and was like, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to stop the sexual advances from you, sir. Ever. I invite them fully. However, a lot of people don't want to sleep with random dudes they met an hour ago. And then, you know, people get angry about it. That's why I'm thinking so far. 
So the police went inside after they detained Phil Spector to find Lana Clarkson in a chair dead with a .38 Colt Cobra revolver near her ankle. It was like down on the floor right by her right ankle. There were no fingerprints on the gun, so clearly it had been wiped off since the last person had touched it. I think if you're trying to pull it the story that she killed herself, there would be fingerprints on said weapon, right? Yeah. Or like the, they'd also be able to test the gun residue. They did actually. There was gun residue on her hands, which they thought was her resisting the gun yeah. being pointed in her face. And there was also small specks on Phil's like wrist area. Like he had maybe washed his hands, but there was still little specks on him as yeah. well. And if he was but far away. If, well, yeah. yeah. Okay. As I was say, depending on how they had it, I mean, from that, something like that, um, how I'm looking like how she's in the chair and stuff, it would have blown back all over her clothing and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm actually going to include pictures of the crime scene in the YouTube version of this. If you don't want to see them, um, you know, just listen to audio. It is an audio-based platform. But, um, yeah, there was gunshot residue on both of their hands, just more so on hers. But also, he could have just put it in her hands afterwards, you know? Well, the gunshot residue is from... The blast. The blast. So, I mean, yeah. You can wipe the barrel on people. Yeah. Like, it was mostly on her fingertips. Yeah. So, you could totally wipe it on people. But that's what was happening. She was in a chair sitting down slumped over. There was also blood leaking out of her mouth because she did get shot in the mouth. And my top observation is pretty people, especially models and actresses, do not shoot themselves in the mouth. It is a thing a lot of us have, especially myself. You got to leave a pretty corpse. I do not think a pretty girl is going to shoot herself in the mouth. Right? I, would, I don't live that life, so. You don't live that life? You're just hot naturally? I have to make sure I'm wearing lashes anytime I leave the house, just in case I get in a terrible car wreck, that I will be leaving a corpse. The cops are going to be like, oh, what a tragedy. That's all I want. I couldn't kill us. I'm an organ donor. Take my organs and just drop me off the nearest ditch. Plant Actually, a, plant a tree or something. I found out something care. today, that if you ever get posi tested positive for COVID now or in 10 years or 10 years ago or something, you can never donate your organs. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. Even if you had recovered from it and everything and you're fine, they will not take your organs if you ever had COVID. They'll just go to waste. And I think that sucks. It doesn't even affect really I, it anything doesn't. but the lungs. It doesn't. They just don't want anything to do with you at that point. It's terrible. I mean, you got they people with your eyes. syphilis. They got people with other diseases that affect the entire system. Whatever. Yeah, I was talking to a nurse today and she was saying that you came and done your eyes if you had COVID at some point, even if you recovered from it. It's just stupid. Whatever. It's, a, it's such a waste. Like, there's people out there dying and they can't even use their organs when they're not even affecting anything. I feel like that's, I feel like that don't, I, I mean, I feel like that's not a thing because they can't, I mean, they can't just. If, but you have a positive test on your, like, you know. They no, have, I know, but they can't prove that, oh, hey, these aren't any good because of this. I mean, that's not a thing. I mean, if, they, if they could find a reason to prove it, then yeah, sure. But, but it's what they're doing. I mean, I don't know who's in charge of this, but it's an issue and I think that's stupid. Because, I mean, honestly, your eyeballs can help a lot of people. Like, maybe not take your lungs because an upper respiratory infection, but anything else, like, you should be able to use. Um, but anyways, Lana was shot in the mouth, and there's blood coming out of her mouth from this. I don't think it went all the way through according to what the autopsy said. It didn't go all the way through, if it matters. They also tested her blood and everything. The only thing in her system was 0.12% alcohol levels, which is above the legal driving limit, but not... Blackout, blackout drunk. drunk yeah it's not the worst in the world not not a high school frat party party white girl drunk i never drank in high school my parents would have killed me either. yeah <laughs> the second i turned 19 i was drinking and it was irresponsible you know what's the worst thing you ever did drunk do you ever do anything terrible uh, i mean back when i was doing martial arts and stuff i used to spar used to jump off of stuff drunk you're doing parkour drunk yeah just to test my my limits you could have broken your neck yeah, I had to test my limit somehow. Oh, okay. I, mean, I jumped off a roof and literally landed on my feet and just <laughs> slammed right into the deck. I'm like, oh, I'm good. Oof. No. <laughs> you no. probably felt the next day. No, didn't feel it at all. Hmm. It was great. You're invincible. Pretty much. So with her blood alcohol level and the residue on her hands, there was always a suspicion that maybe she had killed herself. So they have to test that first before they could like charge him with murder. So even though he was detained and questioned by police, he was basically saying like, I could have killed her, you know, it could have been self-defense, blah, 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 blah. He didn't have a straight story because again, he was also drunk. He was more drunk than her, but they didn't test his blood alcohol level at the time. The speculation again was that she was holding the gun away from him, like away from her face. Like he was pointing a gun at her, which he was known to do. Like there was tons of people saying that he pointed guns all around, that she was trying to pull the gun away from herself, like right in front of her. And he shot her 
in the mouth because she avoided his advances. This home that he was living in was known as a castle. It had 32 rooms, 10 bedrooms, and it was searched for evidence that revealed a ton of different guns in different rooms, blood smears on the door near the body, as well as on the stairwell. There was also a bloody cloth diaper, which she was a cloth diaper. I think it's just random. And it was filled with blood, like he had tried to clean something up, maybe like blood off of his own hands or cleaned blood off of the gun itself. Because again, it was clean from any anything or fingerprints. They also had tested Phil Spector's coat and it was examined and there was different conflicting arguments from different specialists about this, but there was a fine mist of blood found on it. It could have been blood splatter from shooting her from a distance about like three feet, or it could have been across the room if she did it really close to herself. It's one of those things you can't really determine because if you're three feet away, it's going to have blood splatter. Or if she shoots herself directly in the face, it's more of a bounce back. So you can still get a miss from yeah. a distance. I don't know enough about it to really say, but I would say when it comes to a gunshot, you're not getting misting. Yeah. Yeah. You're, I don't, you're, you're it was not small get spatters. Mist. See, spatter you'll get. But... Yeah, but there were small spatters. Oh, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, see, okay. So like spat, see spatter and misting. I mean, my eyes, because... I mean, I, I took, I, I was planning on going into forensics and I love like, I love doing like blood spatter, like looking at blood spatter and being stuff. Loved it in high school and everything. I did a lot of projects on everything. And there's a difference between spatter droplets and like misting and stuff. Yeah, but well, the defense called it mist. The it, prosecution called it spatter. With, with, with a gunshot or something, you're if not you look really at the code, get a mist. It's more of a, it's more of a spatter to me. It's yeah. more of a one direction widespread. Yeah. Um, but, you know, of course the, Defense is going to call it a mist from a far away distance. But the coat had blood on it, is what I'm <laughs> saying. He was nearby, at least. Now, Lana's life was investigated to make sure she didn't have any, like, suicidal tendencies, and they found nothing. She was actually doing okay. Of course, when Phil goes to trial for this, he suggests that she was a failing actress. She needed the money, and she was depressed about not making it in Hollywood, and that's why she took her own life in the house. But there was no actual evidence to support this, and she was doing okay at her job and as well as TV appearances. Phil hired Rob Shapiro, who is very famous, to help paint a picture to the obvious building publicity and painted a thing of innocence. He was also released on $1 million bail, even though he was being charged with second degree murder. While this was getting a ton of publicity in Hollywood in the area, there was a ton of people saying that they weren't surprised. Like people, even like John Lennon's ex-girlfriend and his ex-wife's best friend in the Ronettes, they said that like they weren't surprised he was always waving guns around and there was also a history of substance abuse and like alcohol especially. He would drink with dinner and then go out to the bars afterwards and just get blasted. He did have a limo driver so he never had to drive home, thankfully. And of course his limo driver is the one that reported the murder in the first place. Now Phil, he hired Rob Shapiro to help him manage this. He also hired a ton of people so he spent millions of dollars on his defense for this. Phil would do press conferences, just playing the victim. He would like not shut up during these press conferences. It's really embarrassing to watch. He was mad at the police for attacking him in his own home and even comparing the authorities to Hitler at some point. He loved the attention he got from the spotlight. He'd been out of the spotlight for a while since the 60s. It was now the 2000s. He had been out of the spotlight for a while after a couple failed songs and he was loving this new attention. He would not listen to Leslie Abramson. Do you know who that is? No. Does it sound familiar at all? No. So Leslie Abramson is a really good defense lawyer. She's very famous for defending the Menendez brothers. I mean, technically she lost that case because they got arrested and they're still in jail today. But that was a very interesting case and she made it huge. Like the Menendez brothers killed their parents and she made a huge defense that even I'm like, hmm, maybe they deserved it a little bit. But she's a very famous defense lawyer. But she was hired to like help during these press conferences and kind of lead the way. But <laughs> he wouldn't shut up and listen to her so she quit and he hired a new defense lawyer who was also very famous because he can afford it and he hired bruce cutler do you know who that is name sounds familiar bruce cutler defended um john Gotti, a mob boss um i i forgot which family it's for but he was a mob boss he went on trial three times and he let him out at three times like bruce cutler is the man you want to hire he's also very um standoffish in court he fights with judges a lot because he's always like very loud and outgoing and stuff but he i mean he does his job very well like, he gets mob bosses off of prison for life multiple times like well, he yeah, can do uh, it the mob bosses don't ever do anything they are innocent they get other people to do it i know and that's basically how he got out but <laughs> exactly you organized crime is such a hard thing to pin down in the exactly. first place because there's too many layers to it yeah um but bruce cutler was the one who got john Gotti off of everything 
Um, which sucks. He's defending shit people like Phil Spector and John Gotti. However, he's good at his job. You gotta give him props. The prosecution took the side of her turning down the advances, because obviously the mood was set in the room, and that he had pointed a gun at her and was like threatening her. They actually had a witness in trial. They had several witnesses in trial that were all females telling like all the terrible things he had done, like locking them in the house for days, having a gun put to their head because they wouldn't sleep with him, um, people getting slapped in the face because they wouldn't get naked in front of them and like have sex with them. And he was just very violent. They were like, he could have made romantic advances, maybe it would have happened, but he would just choose violence if he couldn't get what he wanted, which is weird. And he's also hideous. So like nobody's gonna sleep with that. And I like, besides you, honey, because you're super hot, I like a creepy, ugly guy, but he's just fucking ugly. Like this dude's not attractive and Lana was beautiful. So actually fun fact is that the prosecution was actually allowed to use statements he had made to police as well as his own words, including, I think I killed somebody. And they decided to screw the defense. Like they knew that they had these things and evidence they could use against them. So they thought in the opening arguments, they would be like, he said this, you know, he, he admitted to it. And that would be the opening argument for the prosecution. They decided to not do that. And it really cut um, the defense lawyer, Bruce Cutler off. And he didn't know what to do. So he was like really stumbling and he did get replaced after a few days on trial because the prosecution really threw him off by not using his own words against him, which would have made a lot of sense, but they thought I had a strong enough case without using his own words. One of the defense's strategies was actually to use the women that had testified against him and shown the pattern of abuse, saying that these women had feelings for him even though he abused them. I feel like that's a really shitty strategy and it is possible it is possible to have feelings for someone who has abused you or not have bad feelings towards someone who abused you. People abused me and I don't have bad feelings towards them. I still talk to them sometimes and it's fine. People can still talk to people that abuse them. Doesn't mean they're a good person. You can just still get along, you know? Yeah. <laughs> God, I've been there. You've been abused? Not in the sense that you have. Which one? Which, way, which one are you talking about? What do you mean? Which way have I been abused? Which way? Physically? Oh my God. Physically? Either way. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought you meant like emotionally abused or? Yeah. You've been emotionally abused? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's the oh, Marine Corps thing, huh? No. Oh. Not at all. I didn't do that. <laughs> oh, okay. I got questions after this episode. <laughs> But anyways, they had a witness on the prosecution side that was actually with Phil that night when he was going out to dinner as well as to the nightclub that Lana worked at. The witness's name was Kathy Sullivan and she said after they went to dinner, they went to the House of Blues where Lana was being a hostess and Lana had stopped Phil at the door. She didn't know who he was. She didn't know like he was a big famous guy. She actually called him Miss by accident because Phil was known to wear these huge ginormous ridiculous wigs to try to make himself look taller and she called him miss and um, told him it was a private party you can't come in and one of the co-workers with, with Lana had to correct her and say like no he's really famous you gotta let him in so that was their first interaction of the night and apparently it didn't go well and he was really pissed off about it so he sat down at their table with the lady Kathy and he ordered a shot of rum and when Kathy ordered water he berated her for it got really mad and sent her home with the limo driver then the limo driver came back for him at the end of the night Lana was getting off work at 2.21 a.m. and helped Phil to his car. He was very drunk, so he helped him to the car. She was off work. And then he begged her to go home with him. She said no several, several times, but she also needed kind of help with her career. So she was like, okay, I'll do it. I'll have one drink with you and then I'm leaving. And he said, that's fine. The limo driver could take you home after this one drink. And she thought maybe this will help her career a little bit. Um, the driver took them to the house. They watched a movie in the car and then the driver waited outside because again, Lana said it was only one drink. So that's why the limo driver was still outside at 5 a.m. And then around 5 a.m., like we said, he heard the shot and called 911 and we know what happened from there. Now the first trial of this was deadlocked 10 to two. They couldn't decide whether or not he was guilty, but they had a mistrial for that. On April 13th, 2009, Six, six years? Yeah, six years after this crime happened, he was finally found guilty for second degree murder and charged with 19 years to life. And you know what? It was his life because he died in prison. And I don't feel bad for him. So what do you think? Like, he's a piece of shit, right? Oh, yeah. I, I'm all for, you know, being allowed to carry, you know, yeah. guns and stuff like that. But Not again, waving them faces. Oh, no, yeah. That all goes back. It's gun control. Yeah. I mean, I'm 
prior military, but even more so, I'm Southern and, and whatnot. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm all for gun control or all for being able to own a gun and stuff like that. Right. To some extent, should I say, should there be a little bit more screening? Because I'm not going to lie, when I went for my concealed carry up in Pennsylvania, it was kind of scary how, how just ridiculously easy it was to get my concealed carry license from the courthouse. Is it because the military thing or just... They didn't even, like, I, I was told, oh, you bring your DD-214 and it, like, kind of helps the process. So I brought my DD-214. I went to the courthouse. They gave me a form. I filled out my form. And then when they, you know, they called me up, they uh, I gave them my form. I was like, oh, hey, I brought my DD-214. He's like, yeah, we don't even need that. We'll just uh, take your picture, 20 bucks. Okay. Yeah. So you just, wait, it. you'd have to take a class? No. Well, because, see, and that's the thing is that uh, that was the reason for the DD-240. So I didn't, because some states you have to take a safety class. I think yeah. like Florida and stuff does. Yeah, you do. Um, I guess PA doesn't have that. Um, so yeah. No, There's more people there. They never asked me if I took a class or anything. He just like, you know, fill out the form. Uh, the sheriff has like two weeks to do a background check. Uh, so I was like, oh, hey, cool. So if I pass or if I passed it, I would, you know, that's when I would get my concealed carry. Right. But apparently, no, I walked out the same day. They took my picture. I gave them my 20 bucks. I walked out the same day with a concealed carry. Um, that's sketch. As I know, right? I was like, um, <laughs> now this kind of slight, like I'm all for it, but that, that kind of worries me a little bit. Just how easy it is. It makes more sense when there's like but, a class. So you know, safety yeah. and issues and stuff. Well, exactly. Um. But no, yeah, I mean, I'm all for carrying. I mean, we went through the whole the, the whole Texas shooting, yeah, things like that. Yeah, we did which, an episode on Charles Whitman. That actually, I know of like three other stories which are Texas, same thing, of Texas shootings, of school shootings, um, and things like that. But no, and of course, then just that just goes back to the military is that one, unless you intend to use the weapon, you don't draw it. And no. two, if you're going to point it at somebody, I mean, I guess, you know, I guess in his case, it doesn't apply to. Oh, because like, he was prepared to kill her? Yeah, exactly. If yeah. you point at whatever. But, like, the whole taking you out and firing up in the air and, and, you know, especially with his with his past, like, if because it was proved, you know, the, the alcohol and drug abuse yeah. at that point, no guns for them. Uh, uh, you know, that's, no. that's a little, no, that's a little sketch. No. And to have it, I mean, uh, first of all, it was a handgun, which you need a concealed carry to carry in the first place. Uh, not to, it depends. It's not like it's a shotgun. Some states you can open carry, like Florida, Texas, the only time you need a permit is if you concealed carry, but we have open carry. Yeah, but he was concealed carrying all around town. Okay, then yeah. Yeah. So, and it's just, uh, but anyways, yeah, I, I mean, I'm all for it. But another thing is that looking at these pictures. Of who? Phil? Of her. Oh, her? Yeah. Right? You don't look like that just to kill yourself. You don't look that gorgeous just to kill well, yourself in the face. Well, what I'm saying is, like, she's wearing, like, I guarantee you that robe that she's wearing. Yeah. It's, it's, she's wearing a dress. She was is wearing a dress? Yeah, she left work like okay, that. I couldn't tell if that was a dress or, like, a, because the second one, it kind of looks almost like one of those silk robes. It's just, like, a, a loose-fitting dress. She okay. was working the hostess that night, so. Well, yeah, still, though, I mean, for someone who's going to kill themselves, you're going to get comf- Is this, uh, by the way, so is this, because it was kind of confusing halfway through. They were married, or were they not married? Because you were saying something. Oh, he married one of the Ronettes, which is the okay, band so he was this managing. this is somebody completely different. Yeah, he met her like three hours before okay, they did okay. this. Okay, that's, that's what the second part. I was like, okay, so that's what threw me off. That's kind of why he was like, I barely yeah. know this girl. But like, I mean, again, you're not, people, when they go to kill themselves, if you're going to kill yourself, would you rather be somewhere like you're, would you rather be in a completely unfamiliar place or would you rather wait until you're, you know, comfy? <laughs> and in your own settings, so like, because people who, to think about it, people, you know, those who who kind of commit suicide, they want to be in a familiar surrounding, uh, in a control setting, something that they can kind of control, right? Um, yeah, and things like that. You don't dress up to do it, so I mean, you're not going to be wearing a dress. You're not going to be wearing those those shoes and whatnot. You're going to wait until you can get back home, relax. Are you kidding me? Comfort. If I'm going to kill myself, I'm going to look at the hottest I've ever looked. Okay, but still, you would do it in the comfort of your own home for yes. the most part. Yes. Right. I mean, you wouldn't just be like, oh hey, I've met this person for three hours. I'm over at his house. This is a perfect place to do this. No, it's random. Yeah, exactly. You're having a nice drink. I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's not possible. I mean. It's uh, highly uh, unlikely. Uh, plus, if we go off of a psychological factor, right? So this doesn't prove anything. But for the most part, psychology, psychology would say women, when it comes to suicide, don't use guns. That is okay. Never mind. What? Nothing. I've tried to commit suicide a few times and I had a gun in my hand. 
Yeah, but I mean, well, just for the most part, like women, they they choose more of the the whatever, like you know, overdosing. Yeah. Or. But women like, like the that. idea of falling they asleep the and not waking up. Masculine thing with you know just shooting themselves or hanging uh, themselves. No, women don't typically like the more abrasive thing. We'd rather yeah. fall asleep and never wake up. Exactly. Yeah. Not to say that it can't be done. No, it totally just, can be done, but like it's it's definitely. Uh, how do I say this and not sound shitty? Less romanticized. Yeah. As in, like, typical female suicides. Yeah. I feel like a woman's more likely to jump off a bridge than shoot herself. Yeah. You know? But I don't know. The whole bloated body thing sounds terrible. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's a piece of shit, and I'm glad he's dead, but I kind of wish he was in jail suffering. Also, he's super creepy looking. I don't, I don't care. Okay, you're allowed to like the songs or whatever he produced, because it's a lot, and they're really good songs. But I don't care if someone is successful. It doesn't make them a good person. Do you know any, like, uh high class murders or anything. You didn't know Maura Murray, which we tust, we talked about in episode one. Yeah, didn't know her. You know about like OJ? Yeah, I uh, know, I know OJ. Okay, what did OJ do then, honey? Tell me. Uh, supposedly murdered his wife. And? Uh, his, I can't remember the other one. I know there was another one, I can't remember. He, he killed a guy who was friends with okay, her. Okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you know the sad part is? And also don't say allegedly he did that shit. You know the sad part is, the way that I really know that, well one, I do oh. actually remember hearing about it. Was it the uh, Netflix show? Cause that was really good. No, oh. I do remember hearing about it. I mean, obviously, because I was old enough to know. Like, I, I do remember, and people talked about that forever. Ever. While I was going on, so I remember that. I'm still mad. But mainly, I really remember it because Family Guy. Oh. An episode on it. Oh my god. <laughs> it's not even funny. I don't like Family Guy. So yeah. Uh yeah, but you always like. I say something, you're like, oh, there's a reference to it in this cartoon. Exactly. <laughs> it's a hit or miss. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's a piece of shit. I'm glad he's dead. Fuck you, Phil Spector. Fuck your corpse. And um, that's pretty much it. Like, Also, Lana is buried in Hollywood Forever Cemetery, which is a very famous uh, cemetery. Never heard of it. A lot of people are buried there. Vampira is buried there. Who? Vampira. Don't know who that is. Sounds hot. How are you dating an alternative girl and you don't know who Vampire is? I don't know. What's wrong with you? I know what I like. I don't mean I know the lifestyle. <laughs> I'll show you a picture of Vampire when we're done. All right. Uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for joining us for today's case. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>